we go through what we do in life to handle the challenges that come to us later. And I just think in being in this business, what's allowed me is to help a lot of young kids. Oh. And I have kids that come back and say, Bill, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nurse or I'm this. And, I, and I, we've helped so many kids, mm. kids that don't have fathers. We help them through school. So I made a career out of um, helping all these young kids what I didn't have when I was young. Coming to you straight from Fremont, California, this is the Fremont Podcast dedicated to telling the stories of the past and present of the people and places of the city of Fremont, one conversation at a time. This is Cindy and Deb. You are listening to episode 86 of the Fremont Podcast. Now, here's your host, Ricky B. Okay, so we're at Billy Roy's. How are you? Uh, is I'm your name Bill? Bill, yes. Bill? Yes. Okay, and then how do you say your last name? San Odinos. Se- San Odinos. San Odinos, okay. Now, is that where, is the San Odinos, uh, the Dinos where the Dinos comes in for Dino's restaurant? No. It no. originated from my father-in-law. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The uh, Dino's restaurant yes, did? Okay. Yes. Where did Okay. Where did he get the name from? Uh, it's his first name, Dino. Oh, yeah. okay. Very good. Yeah, it's Gus, but they call him Dino. Okay. All yeah. right. Very good. Now, was uh, Dino's Restaurant your first experience restauranting in uh, yes, Fremont? Yes, I was uh, 13. I got a job there as a dishwasher. <laughs> Are yes, you serious? Yes, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yes. So you got the job there. Uh, so are you from Fremont? You grew up in Fremont? I grew up in Chicago, but okay. I came out here when I was 13 okay. and applied for my job there. As a and, dishwasher. Yeah, and got it as a dishwasher. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. So how long did you work? Uh, at Dino's as a dishwasher, or I progressed probably two years after dishwashing. I started cooking. Okay, and then from there I went to a place called Mission Pines up on uh, Mission and Pine Street across the street from Maloney. Okay, and I was cooking up there for a couple years. Okay, yeah. Was um was uh, the food industry? I know that as teenagers you have a lot of different dreams and you can have aspirations to become something or do something with your life. Um, And I understand that usually when you become a dishwasher, because I was a dishwasher for a camp for like uh, four, three years off and on. It was like weekend camp retreats and I was a dishwasher that for me, it was just a way of making money, not necessarily because that's what I wanted to do. But like, uh, did you have working in the food industry as something you wanted to do as a child? No, no. Okay. What did you want to do? As a young kid, my mom left my dad and I was... uh 13 years old. Oh, wow. My dad brought us all out here, and um, he was total disability, so I had to work. So that was my first job, and I would work. uh, I started working like 80 hours a week, and um, I quit school. As a 13-year-old? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Back in them days, it was a little different. Yeah, yeah. So um, I would work, and I'd uh, get my paycheck, and I'd give it to my dad for the family, and I would get $20 out of it. Wow. And then when I got my job up at Mission Pines, I was cooking 80 hours a week. And at that time, I was making $10 an hour, so my pay was 800 a week. I'd get $20 out of it, and I'd give the rest to my dad for the family. Wow. And then when I was 18, he died, and then I had four sisters to raise. How many sisters? Four. <laughs> they were all younger than you? Yeah. Oh, well, one older, the other three were younger. Okay. Yeah, so then uh, um, after that, I got married. My wife and her parents had owned Dino's, and it was offered for us to purchase it. I was 23 years old. <laughs> Did you have a good relationship with your father-in-law, the Dino? The In the beginning, no. no. I mean, uh, I came from a poor family. Okay. Mom and dad split. Uh, he didn't want me for his daughter, so... <laughs> <laughs> How long had Dino's been around when you Since started working 1976. there? 1976. Okay. Wow. And then I took it over in 1989. Wow. And you were 23 when I you were offered the, years old, yes. the restaurant? Yes. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah, what were your aspirations before that? I know that you pretty much, it sounds to me like life was a sur- was survival. It was that. survival mode. We didn't have a choice. You know, yeah. I didn't have a choice to, you know, and I remember back in them days, uh, I'd get off work at 9.30, and um, my father-in-law now, back then, at we'd have to put 9 o'clock on our check, and we just got paid till 9. And oh, my was goodness. Like, and, but you'd keep working. You'd keep working because you, you couldn't say no. 
Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Huh. And so for all them years, I'm working an extra half hour, and, <laughs> and he kept saying it's for the business. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What an incredible story. So at 23, you were offered the, uh, the restaurant. When I was at Mission Pines, they were closing it down. They sold it. And my boss called me in the office, and he says, you know what you want to do the rest of your life? And I was asking my manager at the time, which was my boss's nephew, and he said, Al, Al don't want you working for someone. He wants you to own your own business. He wants to help you get your own business. And at that time, um, Dino's came available, and I ended up taking Dino's. And, wow. And then that, at that time, when Mission Pine closed back in 1980, I think closed in 88, uh, my boss gave me like 18000 in cash uh, for all the hard work I did there. Uh, wow. I would never say no. I would always work. Oh, yeah two in the afternoon till six in the morning you know wow but at that time there was no choice you know yeah. it's not like yeah today and you know the government never helped my dad when he was total disability fought in korea they said they lost his records um, um he had his dog tags but you know they so he didn't end up really getting help so it was up to me to work uh 80 hours a week all the time oh my goodness and then when he died i kind of helped raise my sisters with my aunt and uncle wow your aunt and uncle were living in this area at the yes, time? Yes, that's why okay. we came out here from Chicago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So you, uh, when did you, what, how old were you when you got married then? I was 20 years old. So you were 20 and then 23 you were off for the business. Yes, yes. Now, um, did you, I mean, did, did you have a vision for Dino's at that point that was different than what it already was? Or did you just figure, no, no just get in there and At just, that age, you're just working to survive. <laughs> I'm working to keep my sisters going yeah. and myself going and yeah. and my in-laws helped me out a lot i okay. mean they they financed me to purchase the business okay. from them and okay. they carried the loan and wow yeah how would you describe dino's then compared to the way it is now nothing's really changed we tried to keep it the same yeah and then coming into billy roy's here we always want to just keep dino's the same for all the people that have been coming here since the 70s okay. and uh, our first thought was closing it down and then we thought no we want to keep it for mm. all the people that supported us for all these years yeah 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 that's cool i uh used to spend my summers on my grandparents farm in michigan and my grandparents would always take us to little uh diners like uh what well, like Dino's. Yeah. So when I moved here nine years ago and I went to Dino's for the first time, it reminded me very much of diners that I had been to in the Midwest uh, when uh, when I was growing up. Uh -huh. And uh, I love the I love the feel of it. And uh, my family and I, um, yeah, I, we've we've there's been special days where we're like we just need to go somewhere where it feels like uh, home and cozy and so yeah. we've gone to Dino several times for that it's been really and, great and everybody tells us we need to make a change there now but I just don't want to yeah that's you know good. I have the same chef over there we've cooked together at Mission Pines in the 80s wow most most of my staff has been with me for over 30 years wow and a lot of them have come over here to Billy Roy's yeah or skillets and Niles yeah. they, they they've gone over there wow so we've had the same staff for like 30 years or more <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. So are the, the currently the restaurants that you own are uh, Dino's, Billy Roy's, where we are right now, yes. and then Skillet's? Yes, we have uh, two more out in Oakdale, which okay. one is run by one of my sons. Okay. And the other one is run by one of my other sons and my daughter. Okay. <laughs> and they all went to college and probably swore they'd never be in the restaurant business, yeah. but now yeah. they own their own restaurants. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's the way it is. You uh, you grow up in a certain industry, and then you you think there's no way I'm going to do that, and then it's where you end up. It's, yes, it's kind of in the blood, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And then my daughter had to come over here and help us here. Uh, she stayed with us for a couple months to help us do the okay process of self serve because we we've, we've never done nothing like this. Yeah, yeah. I met them uh, when uh, Billy Roy's first opened up. I was here on the opening opening day and that week and I got to I meet them and it was really nice to meet them and, yes. and, and uh, connect with them. I know that, um, and then they, I think you'd even told me at that point about the restaurants that you had up in Oakdale, which, yes. is, which is cool. Yeah. So those are the five restaurants that you're yes. owner? Okay. And one more up in um, 
off, t off of 237, uh, off the golf course there. Okay. At, at uh, Sunnyvale Golf so, Course. Oh, in Sunnyvale. What's yeah. that? Which which one? What That's is Makara. that? That's um, Okay. Yeah, it's just a restaurant up inside the golf course. Okay. Oh, wow. One, one of my girls have been with me for 15 years. She's up there <laughs> running that, and I, and I think now she's trying to take it over. <laughs> 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 well, speaking of uh, working with someone, um, Priscilla is—is is she part owner of Skillets? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I remember when Skillets opened up because I used to spend a lot of time at Devout Coffee. Still do. Um, but Priscilla was over there, and she would come over in the mornings to get coffee from Devout, yes. and I was usually there in the mornings when they were opening up, and um, she'd always bring. Uh, breakfast burritos over to the employees that were working at Devout, and I just happened to be able to share in the goods of uh, of the gift that she'd bring over. And I loved getting those breakfast burritos in the morning. Yes. Um, and now it's like, I mean, Skillets and Billy Roy's, but specifically Skillets and Niles is like the happening place. Like you rarely drive by there without seeing, you know, a ton of people lined up. Uh, out the door and that's a good thing though too I mean sometimes you see a line because the restaurant doesn't work efficiently they're not doing a good job of getting people in but I've never had I've never been to skillets and had to wait a long time before I got my seat and it's always been great service over yeah. there Priscilla's kind of acclimated to our family yeah and, and yeah uh, when you're part of our family we all have to work hard that's right <laughs> We'll be right back. You can hear the rest of this conversation in just a moment. Are you looking to buy or sell a home in Fremont or the surrounding areas? Look no further than Petroselli Homes Realty Group. With almost two decades of experience, this family-owned brokerage is an expert in the local real estate market. Jennifer treats everyone like family, and with her patience, knowledge, and excellent communication skills... She helps her clients make smart real estate decisions. If you're thinking of making a move, reach out to Jennifer Petroselli today to learn more about how she can help you achieve your real estate goals. I want to tell you about Milk and Honey Cafe. They're a family-owned restaurant located on Fremont Boulevard in North Fremont. They serve fresh noodles, stir fries, bentos, soup, vegetarian dishes, boba drinks, and so much more. And for Fremont podcast listeners, if you make a purchase of $50 or more, you get a complimentary Thai tea or a fruit tea with your purchase. You can find out how to dine in or order at milkandhoneyfremont.com. For more information and links, be sure to check out our show notes. If you want to hear more of their story, check out episode eight on the Fremont podcast. And now back to our conversation. So what was the vision or what was the thought behind starting Skillets? How did that come about? I had a steakhouse in uh, Newark. Okay. And I met Priscilla when she was young over there. And then I was getting out of the steakhouse and I was uh, transforming up to Oakdale. Okay. I bought a restaurant up there. And um, um, my friend called me on Skillets and told me her husband died. Hmm. And at that time, it was um, an Italian place. Um, I can't remember the name of it, um, but her husband died, and I told Priscilla, this is a perfect restaurant for you. Okay. So originally, it, you know, it was just for her. Yeah. And then I tried to talk my sister into partnering up with her, and my sister didn't want to work that much, and <laughs> and then, but it was originally going to be, you know, Priscilla there on her own, and I was going up to Oakdale. Yeah. And then um, she asked us uh, to stay in at 50% and help her run it. So we agreed to stay, and um, then when we took over, taking over Billy Roy's and opened it, we asked her to come over here okay. and, you know, help us over here. That's awesome. And then between my kids here helping us and my daughter getting us started, and, you know, it's it's been very good so far, wow. you know. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm very impressed with Priscilla. I know I was hoping that she'd be able to join us for this episode, but maybe... I'll get it, I'll catch her another time but um I was talking to her uh a little while ago and I was at, I was expressing to her the fact that I just feel like she's always on top of things uh she's always she always care she shows care for the customer and yet at the same time um she doesn't let that affect the way that she 
serves and the way that she works. Yes. Um, she demonstrates genuine care and um, service toward whoever's there. Um, and yet she still works very, very hard. And She's I think very that that's focused on customer service yeah. and taking care of customers. Yeah, I think that's amazing. I think it's amazing. And then coming over here to Billy Roy's, um, I think that this is, I've seen all the same sort of uh, attitude and mentality from uh, in all three of your restaurants yes. here in Fremont that are just, that's just awesome. Yes. It's very, yeah. very good. Yeah, she's come over here and given her customer service like she does yeah. Yeah. over there. That's why we thought it was a good decision to bring her in here. Yeah. Um, I originally wanted my daughter and all them here, but it's too far to drive from Oakdale to here. And wow. Yeah, but yeah. she does come and help us every time she needs us. Each of these three restaurants are very different. Not, not I won't say very different, but they're different from each other. Like you go to Skillet's, and it's you're going to get a different menu and you know different options than you would at Dino's, and then you come here to Billy Roy's, and there's a completely different yes. menu. What was the uh, what was the the vision or who whose idea were was like say the menu at Skillets? Skillets menu was more of um, me and Priscilla putting something together, something similar to Dino's. Okay. But then, um, as she was running it, I kind of stepped back and she then grew the menu and worked with our chefs, and just constantly, you know, critiquing the menu, constantly changing it. Yeah. When we came into Billy Roy's. Well, we opened a place where my daughter graduated college. She says, what am I going to do? And my son says, Dad, I want you to look at this restaurant that's opening down the street. Is it going to hurt us? So I go over there. I go, no, I don't think so. But why didn't they take the restaurant in the front? It's, it's in better. And I told him, go get the lease. So I told my daughter, we found something for you to do until you decide what you want to do. So her envision was the burgers, both her and my son. And then when they opened up, COVID had hit the next day. Oh, my goodness. I mean, so then they were mostly doing all to-go orders, and we saw how lucrative it was and what them two created over there. Yeah. Then this was originally going to be, Billy Roy's was going to be a breakfast and lunch spot. Oh. But after I saw the envision they had and what they put together, I was telling my partner Roy and Priscilla, this is what we should do here. Okay. Okay. And I think it was a good decision to do that okay yeah that's all i think it's been amazing i think it's been awesome so you just mentioned roy your bill yes of the billy yes and then who is roy how did you meet roy roy is my landlord at dino's and he's owned the property on dino's and thornton he used to own from thornton to mission mission down to dakota dakota back up to fremont wow back in the 40s wow so he sold most of the property and kept this whole corner um, Jack in a Box, the dentist next door. This, so um, they red tagged the building. Uh, we got it out of red tag. I helped Roy. We leased it to a car dealer, and Roy said, Bill, I want to open a restaurant. I want to do something different from my father, who owned all this property in Fremont in the 40s. Huh. So I agreed with Roy to open a restaurant, and then little by little, we couldn't come up with a name. and. Somebody said, hey, just call it Billy Roy's. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. So he said that uh, he said that he wanted to do something different for his father who owned the property. What, tell me a little bit more about that. Back in the 40s and 50s, his family owned this property. It was all um, farmland. Okay. You know, he would always tell me stories about taking their horse and cartridge and going to Oakland and getting all produce and bringing produce and... He'd say they leave at you know midnight, get home at six, seven in the morning. Wow. You know, so he goes back a long way in Fremont. And when they red tagged the building, and then he just said he wanted something as a better legacy for his father than just a dealership. Huh. Huh. And I thought it was a good choice on him yeah. because the mayor has come. Everybody has told him, you know what, you've done yeah. something well for Fremont. You yeah. Know? We did an episode, it was a bonus episode, but we did an episode uh, for Fre the Fremont's first annual restaurant week, and uh, it was it kicked off here. Actually, I think I actually had my microphones and everything set up at this exact spot. I think it was a higher table, though, and, um, and uh, we interviewed the mayor and, um, and uh, um, several of the other, oh, well, I think one or two other council people. Uh, as well as uh, people from the Chamber of Commerce and the Department of Economic Development for that episode. Yes. So, but it was kicked off here, and it was a it was a perfect uh, kickoff. And, and it's for funny that. you say that because it, 
we used to go back and forth all the time about the longest running restaurant in Fremont and it was always between Dino's and Countryway and one day I was sitting down talking to my mother-in-law and she said Dino's was first three months later Countryway came in oh so she always tells me Dino's <laughs> is the longest running the longest restaurant in Fremont okay yeah okay wow that's so cool we're getting close on 50 years there wow yeah are you gonna do anything special for that yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. I want to do a comeback for all the you know people that supported us since yeah. in the seventies, and it's like we've seen so much change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you went from you know thirteen years old washing dishes survival, probably for the first at least the first decade that you were here. Yeah. What are some of the things and hopes, the visions that you've had um, for the legacy that you would that you are leaving for uh, the future? Because I made me you know kind of get emotional when you were talking about the, the things that you had to deal with as you were younger mm -hmm. and your life is different now you know what are some of the things that as you look forward what are the things that you hope to leave here in Fremont with what you've done I, I think a lot of um, there was like never really a vision vision it was always survival mm -hmm. and I always thought having a steakhouse I've always wanted a dinner house and then I realized what we go through what we do in life to handle the challenges that come to us later. And I just think in being in this business, what's allowed me is to help a lot of young kids. Oh. And they always come back. And I had one girl come back, and she has her own TV criminal justice show. I have kids that come back and say, Bill, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nurse or I'm this. And, I, and I, we've helped so many kids, mm. kids that don't have fathers. We help them through school. So I made a career out of um, helping all these young kids what I didn't have when I was young. Mm. You know? and That's awesome. In fact, I was asking one of the police guys uh, about a kid, Tyler, and he says, hey, he's our sergeant now. And I go, that kid grew up in my backyard. I mean, I had batting cages in my backyard. I had my garage was a gym. I would let any kid come there and work out do what they want so the vision in the restaurant now especially in here is we get to hire a lot of high school kids mm. and the good thing is they make good money here they're yeah. not making minimum wage they're making yeah. from 27 dollars an hour and up wow you know wow. so it allows us to help all these kids that are you know going to school and kids that really need it that's great you know i was just going to ask you about that one of the things that's it's really hard and i've heard a lot of people even complain about um, anything but the tech industry. Like the tech industry is like people move here for getting a good job in the Silicon Valley to make a lot of money. Um, but almost anything else, like I have friends who are owners of other restaurants in Fremont and sometimes they just really struggle maintaining a good working staff. Um, you were talking earlier about a staff who not only will work at Dino's or not only work at Skillets, but there, there's like this, or, or Billy Roy's, but there's just kind of like this, this uh, the, almost like a family connection between all of the restaurants with the different workers. What, what would you say is a secret, or maybe it's not a secret, maybe it's just a, a way that you run things, or, and I think you, you said it partly in that you pay them well, you want to you wanna help them succeed. But what are some of the things that you would say that you do that helps you keep uh, good workers and keep them, you know, keep them very active in, in their business, in the business that you have here? What, I, is there a secret to that? On, on our busy days when we're really busy, I always pay everybody extra. Oh. If it's a busy day, I always wanted it to win. We're really busy. I want everybody happy. I like it when they know that it's going to be busy. We're going to get extra money today. It isn't like, hooray for Bill, and we're just getting the same amount. So usually all the people that are not tipped employees, like the cooks, the dishwashers, we pay them extra money on busy days. Wow. Um, one of my chefs just got married. Um, he had a wedding, and I told him, I said, hey, listen, invite as many people as you can. The food's free. I'll do it. So I, I, I cater the weddings. I cater. And, and as I'm catering the weddings, I get all these kids that are 35 years old that used to work for me when they were 12 or 14 back in them days. And they'd be like, Bill, you remember me? You remember me? And it's like, so they're, they're always known that we mm. help them. We're not just on what goes inside this building. You know, anytime they get married or have birthdays, 
I cater their parties. I never charge for nothing. Wow. You know, so we're part. Even when we opened Billy Roy's, we didn't have to hire anybody at first. We have like a, between all the restaurants, we have 150 employees. Everybody came from the other restaurants all here. <laughs> so everybody kind of knew exactly I, what to do. I noticed that on opening day. I was like, everybody that's working here, I see at Dino's or I see at Skillet's. Like, there's no, like, I didn't feel like anybody was uh, a new face to me. Even the cooks from Oakdale came here, the <laughs> servers from Oakdale. And then someone says, Bill, you're like Adam Sandler. You, you know, wherever you go, your whole cast is with you, you know? So it's like everybody followed us right here. Yeah. Even one guy who was a chef at the steakhouse Back in 2012, when I closed, I sold it, he got a job at, in a motel, went to school, became a chef. When he heard I was here, he called me. He says, Bill, I hear you're opening up in Fremont. Can I come work there? I go, Abraham, you're a chef in the motel. He goes, I don't care. I want to be working for you, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I know that you're a very busy man, and you spend a lot of time investing in your business, investing in your staff. Um, but think outside, think outside the restaurants that you own, that you run. Do you have any other favorites in Fremont? Do you have a, a restaurant that you would look at and say, I enjoy going there just for myself? I enjoy going to Country Way. Country, country Way, Country okay. Way and Baldi's. Okay. I've always supported Country Way. I've always supported Baldi's. Yeah. They're hardworking people. Yeah. We're um, all the same family. Uh, there's Dino's Grill in uh, <laughs> Newark, which is my cousin over there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we all support each other. And that's, cool. that's where we go to. Yeah. Yeah. George yeah. and Ted, they do a, Pete, they do a good job at Country Way. And there's Peter at Baldi's. They're extremely good. I love, I love what you're doing. And I think so much of what you do really speaks to my heart on a, not, a lot of different levels. I mean, uh, there's so much that I love on your menus. And apart from these restaurants and the food... Um, I think that you guys provide something that um, a, a culture, a mentality that helps keep Fremont uh, special and, and, and holds on to that for a long time. When, what I saw probably one of the biggest challenging things here is when we open, I bring my sister Jackie who runs Dino's and then you have Priscilla who's at Skillas, and then my daughter who is at Backwoods and then you put three people that run their own <laughs> restaurants together and then throw me in the picture and everybody's got their own we, we were all the same at one time but yeah. when everybody started taking their own restaurants you know <laughs> and now putting everybody in a put, pot together and mixing yeah. them together it's Get, like that's been the biggest challenge yeah yeah too many uh, too many cooks in the kitchen exactly, I guess exactly right? yeah, yeah. yeah but you know everybody got together and everybody got on the same page mm -hmm. and you know, we all just pull together and we all know that um, on a busy day, on a Saturday or Sunday, between all the restaurants, we're serving maybe 7,000, 8,000 people in one day. That's, wow. And that's, for us, that's, you know. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah. You know, we don't compare to a chain or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, somebody coming from never, and I mean, I went one week in high school and that was it after, you know, it's like I had to wow. quit, you know. Yeah. 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 Did you, uh, what are some other, do you have any other hobbies? Do you have anything else that you enjoy with doing with your time? I, I like golfing, but I haven't golfed in years. My best friend who got me into golfing died, and I okay. stopped golfing after he died. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But eventually, you might get back I, I to gotta it. I got to get back into it. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Do you, um, do you have any other hopes for anything else down the road? Um, we are opening next door to Billy Royce here. Right over here? A beer and wine garden. Oh. We want to become one of Fremont's entertainment areas where we're sitting on five acres. Yeah. And we want to have a uh, playground back there for dogs. We want a dog park. We want a park for people. We're looking in the future, beer and wine garden, and trying to tie Dino's in with this whole thing. Oh, and okay. And make this whole corner one. One big complex. Yes. yes. Wow. Where you can go to Dino's. And then just order pizza and then walk over to the beer garden, order, you know, so that's what we're working that's on right awesome. now. Yeah. That's and awesome. My partner Roy, who is the, the head guy of it all, you know, he, he has the property and you know, I'm just uh, You're you're the one to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we work so well together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about that. You know, one of the things that I have I ask for suggestions from people or comments about the city of Fremont, and one of the things that people say is that there's nothing to do in the evenings. And I know that um, I know that COVID affected that a lot. Get over here. It's his birthday. 
Wait, it's his birthday? Yeah. No, Why it is not. Sir? No, get over here. Get over here. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> come, sit, come here. So, uh, I got Priscilla here. I got her uh, running between tables. Say hi, Priscilla. Hello, guys. Say happy birthday to Bill. <laughs> there we go. Happy birthday, Bill. That's wow. awesome. Wow. You must be, what, 35? Yeah, 58 now. 58. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Well, I did not know it was your birthday. I'm, I, you, what, yeah. what would you like? To, so let me ask you this. So we got a customer here. What's your name? My name is Mateo. Say it, speak in there. What's it? My name is Mateo. Mateo. Okay. Do you know who I'm this Mateo. is right here? No. So this is, you know, do you know where you're at right now? Yes. What's the name of this place? I forgot. It's Billy Roy's. Oh. You know who this is? No. This is Billy. <laughs> oh. Of the Billy Roy's. He is the one who owns this restaurant. He does? He does. Wow. And it's his birthday today. <laughs> well, this place is better than McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, what do you think of your meal? Did you guys pay him it's to great. come say that? <laughs> is it great? <laughs> is, this, is, this your, is this your first time here? Oh, uh, yeah. Is it? Mm-hmm. You like it? You going to come back? Yeah, probably if I go in this area. Because okay. I'm living really close to this place. Okay, how old are you? I'm nine. Nine. You know, he started working at, he also owns Dino's right over here. There's oh, another what? restaurant right over here. Why is the Dino's open for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long ride home every night. <laughs> I live out in Oakland. But we have a wheel in there, and you go in there with your sister and tell them. Oh, she's not my sister. What, what is she's she? my friend. Tell them what your friend that I said you could spin the wheel one time free, and then you get a free prize in there. Look at that. Right inside cool. there. For his birthday, he just that, gave that, you a gift. That makes it say, say Bill and said. she can, too? Yes, she can. There you go. You guys can go in there and spin that wheel in that dessert shop. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Do you, like on, do you want to talk on the Yeah, podcast? do you want to say something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys, uh, are you, yeah. Go tell, go get, go spin the wheel and tell us what you got when you okay. come back. Tell, tell, tell them that I said you get to spin the wheel, okay? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I think that this might be the future, a future hub for evening life. You yeah. know, for people to come, hang out, like you said, get pizza, get burgers, um, bring their dogs, all of those things, and just hang out. That's we need, what we're we trying to hear it towards his yeah you know when Roy said he wanted something different for his father and yeah. the ranch and then he was saying Bill you've been in Fremont since the early 80s let's team up and but he never comes here he's he's got a 3,000 acre ranch in Oakdale <laughs> and he's a farmer <laughs> while we were building this in four years he probably came twice wow wow that's yeah. crazy that's crazy well I think you've done an amazing job are you responsible for the aesthetics in here like all the design My of everything son your son is okay he's our, he's our decorator he walked in one day and he says that wall looks too beer we need let's get a painting up there you know that's awesome so he's always yeah he's that's, our decor guy that's cool so if we're driving up to Yosemite and we stop in Oakdale what's the name of the restaurants that you have up there Cahoots Corner Cafe and uh, Backwoods Burgers okay Okay, very good. If you good. tell them you're, you're coming from Billy Roy's, they'll probably pick up your meal. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. That's yeah. very cool. It's like if people come in here and they tell us they're from Backwoods, we always pick up their meals. That's cool. What'd you that's win? Cool. What'd you get? What'd you get? I got to fill your candy cup. Oh, wow. dude, you filled it up, didn't you? Yeah. What'd your friend get? Uh, she's still spinning. She's still spinning? Or she's still choosing? Oh, I think she's picking up the two. So if you have any suggestions as a kid for this restaurant, because they're still doing work on trying to make it better, what would you say they, would, they could do better for you as a kid? Anything? Not really. Really? This place awesome. is really good. Oh, I don't yeah. really have anything to say that, that's not good about it. Oh, wow. Very good. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Where yeah. did you win? Where did you win? Same thing. Oh, you Same. oh, look at you. All right. <laughs> Well, this is cool. This is very cool. Happy birthday. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, and um, thank you for the work that you do for the city. I know that you're, you've are you been here a lot longer than I have, um, uh, but I think about it. You know, I tell people that when one of the reasons I do the podcast is not because I grew up here, and tr- I'm not necessarily trying to preserve it for my memory's sake, but my kids are growing up here. I have two sons, you know, and they're growing up here, and I want it to be a place that they're proud of. I want it to be a place that they know that I – help to make a better place for them you know and i think that what you've done here is just just amazing so thank you yeah thank it's you a, very much it's a privilege uh, getting to talk with you awesome. and getting to, my getting to know you as well <laughs> so 
Thanks a lot. Thank man. you. Yep. This episode was hosted and produced by Ricky B. Rachel Prey is the print editor in charge of our newsletter, scheduling and pre-interviews by Sarah S. Additional reporting by Mark Emmons. Andrew Cavett is the editor. I'm Gary Williams. Music provided by Soundstripe.com. You can find everything we make, the podcast, our newsletter, and all of our social media links at thefremontpodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe wherever it is that you listen so you don't miss an episode. And if you would, please leave a review on iTunes. Your reviews help other people find this podcast. Join us next week on The Fremont Podcast. You said it partly in that you pay them well. You want, to, you want to help them succeed. But what are some of the things that you would say that you do that helps you keep uh, good workers and keep them, you know, keep them very active in, in, their bus- in the business that you have here? What, I, is there a secret to that? On, on our busy days when we're really busy, I always pay everybody extra. Oh. If it's a busy day, I always want it to when we're really busy. I want everybody happy. I like it when they know that it's going to be busy. We're going to get extra money today. It isn't like hooray for Bill and we're just getting the same amount. This is a Muggins Media Podcast.